Other parts of the meeting in Washington, the, the convention, foreign policy did come up a lot. And that's where maybe there are some subtle but not uh, outrageous disagreements between some of the people, but that is how much intervention there should be. And of course, I, I took my usual position, but some sort of, you know, use the argument of the humanitarian instincts that uh, maybe, you know, when a lot of people are, are getting killed, don't you think there's a time that we have to do this? And instead of me arguing a, a purely moral reason or purely constitutional reason why we shouldn't get involved, which should be enough, I used the practical argument. I said, you know, what good does it do? How many, take a look at the last 25 years. Why can't the last 25 years be a strong defense of our position? Where have we intervened uh, for humanitarian reasons, which is always an excuse for the military industrial complex and for others, but uh, whether you go to Libya or yeah. Egypt or Afghanistan or now now Ukraine, they, they were, a few people were there were sort of sympathetic. You, you gotta go in there and help the good guys mm -hmm. in there and, and they wanted to uh, just use this as an example instead of me becoming not pro one side uh, because I wouldn't defend their position, they say, oh, that means you have to be pro pro-Russia yeah. and, 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 and pro-Putin. Of course, I think you saw my answer to that, you know. <laughs> pro-fact. <laughs> pro-fact, I'm neither pro-Russian. And, and that's what our policy should be. It's sort of non-interventionism is quite a bit different. And it's, it's really critical to libertarianism. I mean, there is a small strain in libertarianism that says we have to export liberty by hook or by crook, you know, by whatever means. And it really, it's the impulse toward interventionism that's the problem because it pre presumes that you know what's best for other people. And that's, that's the slippery slope you start going down and it always will end up in, in conflict and war. So I think it's really such, a, and you've always talked about this, it's such a critical component of, of freedom, liberty, and libertarianism is to not intervene regardless of how strong that impulse is. Yeah, it, it may start off well intended, we're gonna do good, and uh, then it morphs into something else because they have violated the basic principle, and you use the right word, they want to do this through force. So once you're using force to do good, then it gets out of control. And I remember one of the uh, individuals, writers, authors that came to our office for a session for the Liberty Committee uh, was Klaus Rinn. Mm. And Klaus uh, was a, an expert on uh, the French Revolution yes. and the Jacobins, you know, and he has a book, and he used the term neo-Jacobins. And uh, so there's, even if the leaders of our intervention in the Middle East had uh, sinister motives, I think the majority of the people, uh, even those who want to go to Ukraine now, they have believed the propaganda, they're going for the good reasons. But, but then, uh, uh, of course, Ren's argument was look at, look at what happened in, uh, in France. Yes. You know, hardly, hardly a good example for justifying you know, the use of force. And the other thing is the people that argue in places like, like Ukraine, they argue uh, for, for, for foreigners, or foreigners to get out, but they, they never argue for the U.S. to get out, and that's a point you made at the, uh, at the conference, is that I, you said, I agree that, that all of these foreign militaries should get out, but that includes the U.S. too. Well, isn't the recent uh, token effort at a peace, peace agreement between the two sides uh, right now is? That's one of their planes, is get to foreign governments out, but that, they're not including the United States. Well, the president has a plan next month to send 600 paratroopers, U.S. active military, into Ukraine to start training the military, and as I read the agreement, that was point 10 of the agreement, that all foreign troops need to leave. And that seems to me at least to be, a, in the spirit of the, of the agreement, a violation to send U.S. troops in. You know, one other question that came up was, uh, what example would you have to set a standard for the type of government we have? Realizing that not too many people would jump up and down and say, well, we immediately have to follow this country. But I like to use uh, the presidency of Switzerland, <laughs> which they don't have. They essentially don't have a president. And, uh, and yet they have uh, a defense. You know, it's, uh, the individuals are de defended. And they say, oh, yeah, but that makes you vulnerable. How vulnerable were they in World War I or World War II? They don't send troops around the world. So maybe we could learn a lesson from that.